Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm joined by a very, very special guest. Um, he is a local Bay Area native, a New York Times bestselling author, teacher, cartoonist. Uh, he is also an Eisner Award winner and the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. Uh, Mr. Gene Yang, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm excited to be here. I've seen that you've done a few of these virtual panel interviews uh, mm -hmm. already. Um, in the last few months. Uh, I'm assuming you're comfortable now doing these? Yeah, um, I mean, I feel like a lot of it, a lot of it's gone virtual, right? So I oh, had yeah. a couple books come out this year. Uh, I was originally scheduled to do some comic book conventions and book festivals. All of that got canceled. So it's all yeah. like this. It's all yeah, like I, I, especially by this point in the year, right? You would have already been, I mean, would you, what convention do you think you would have been at or what? Uh, I was supposed to go to San Diego. Uh, yeah. and then there's like a bunch of different book festivals, right? There was, uh, yeah, yeah. Gone Arizona that I was supposed to go to. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. I mean, the whole world changed. Yeah. This has yeah. been a crazy year. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I mean, I didn't even start doing these interviews until like two or three months ago. Like this, not, this, this did not exist. Like, Oh, okay. So like, this is the yeah. post pandemic. Yes. Enterprise. This is like after like two months of like, what am I, I need to do something else because I also like to go to conventions and stuff. And you know, with all of those canceled, like what, how, how else do you get to talk to creators you want to follow or, you know, um, people in the industry that you want to ask questions of and you can't do that anymore. So I'm like, well, why don't I just ask them myself? So, yeah. yeah. Um, this is great. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. Um, what was the last convention? you went to that, Ooh, you that I went to a person yes um I did a I think it was PLA it was PLA it was Pennsylvania Librarian Association it was in in uh oh. I hope I'm remembering that right okay maybe it was Pittsburgh Librarians Association but it was a librarian association uh uh convention right before lockdown started so it was in March oh, like March yeah. uh flying out there there were some people with masks but definitely not everybody you know in, in the airplane um, and there was just a lot of like, there was, there was some tension in the air, but, but nothing had, had like landed. Right, right, right. Yeah. Officially it, declared. Yep. There wasn't like the, uh, the state of emergency or, you know, the. No, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. It felt very different from how it feels now. You, you've written books and you've written comics. Do you find writing for either one different or do you feel like when you write a story, it, it applies to both mediums yeah i mean i think uh i think the big difference so i've done graphic novels and i've also done monthly superhero comics and and one of the big differences is is page count so when i'm doing a, a graphic novel um there really is no page count that i have to hit you know i can make right. it as, as long or as short as i want uh and, and because of that i can draw out moments if i want something to feel a little mm -hmm. more meditative I, I can do that i could i could spend the, the the page real estate to do that whereas with monthly superhero comics i mean Right now, uh, Marvel's at a, like a 20 page per issue standard. And then DC, I think is at 22. And you have to hit it. Like if you, you can't go shorter, you can't go longer, you gotta hit it right at 20 or right at 22. So, what, yeah. what do you do then if uh, you're like a page short of content? Do you just like stretch out a moment? You stretch or do it you... out, yep, you stretch it out. Or you find one more one page scene that you can throw in, Interesting. right, you know? Yeah. 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 Like I'm going to make this fight scene last 10 more punches or something. Right. Like just, yeah, that's exactly right. You got to do that. That's, that's funny. I always wondered about that because you want to save certain moments for either another issue or later down the line. And so you kind of have to just have that filler. Um, yeah. What was it like uh, writing the comic continuation for Avatar, the last airbender? Oh, like, it was, did, it was crazy. Yeah. How, how yeah. did it even come about? Like, you know, how did it, it, yeah, how, like how did I get that job? Um, so I, I um, when when the show first aired, I was a computer science teacher in Oakland, and um, I heard my students talking about it. Like when they were supposed to be working on their labs, they would be talking about some Nickelodeon show, you know, and they'd be like, you know, who do you think Eng's, uh, you know, earthbending teacher is going to be, or who do you think Katara is going to fall in love with? That You're kind like, of stuff. What they are you talking about? Yeah, and I'd be like, I'd be, it sounded interesting, but I was a teacher, so I'd be like, you need to get back to work. Stop talking about this freaking cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Get back to work. You work. I'm going to go research yeah, this avatar. Yeah. yeah, and then and then I had a friend. Um, his name is Derek Kirk Kim. He's a cartoonist um, in both comics and in animation. He was the one that loaned me the first season on DVD, and I watched it with my wife. Uh, and we were hooked. Like by the third episode, I think we were totally hooked. So uh, we, we, I followed that. I followed the series after that, you know, and, and 
by the time the whole series ended, um, I was just like everybody else. I was a fan. I was wondering what happened to Zuko's mom. Uh, and, and the way I got that, that writing gig was um, when they announced the movie. The first I was one, really right? really excited. Yeah, I was super excited about that movie. Uh, you know, I was like, we're going to get to see everything in live action. It's going to yeah, be amazing. Yeah. And then they announced that M. Night Shyamalan was going to direct it. And I was like, well, his first three movies were pretty good. And then they announced the casting. And when they announced the casting, um, I, was, I was pretty pissed off about it. Derek, the, the, my friend who loaned me that first season, we, I remember getting on the phone with him and we were just like ranting about it. So um, I ended up, like Derek wrote this long blog post about it. I did a, a web comic about how I was going to boycott that movie. So to oh, this wow. day, I've never seen that movie, even though it's on Netflix. Never seen. Oh my movie. god! I've okay. heard though. Yeah, yeah. Don't That's worry. what I mean. The, the fandom, the fandom refers to it as the movie of which we will not speak. So yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I, I get it. Yeah, but but later, like a couple years later, when Dark Horse Comics, a comic book company, acquired the license from Nickelodeon to do these Avatar: Last Airbender comics, <laughs> one of the editors at Dark Horse had read some of my graphic novels before, and she'd also read that comic that I did online. Oh. Um, so she knew that I was familiar with the show, that I was a fan. So they called me up. They called me up and they asked me if I'd be willing to do this for them. So it was really like, wow. it was because I complained about the movie. That's how I got that, that gig. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's great. They, it's like, it's, it's great that they reached out to you, you know, and they're like, hey, yeah. we hear you. Would you like to do something? And you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. And how long did that, uh, that run go for? How, how much? So, it was, a, it was a few years. I mean, it was several years that we did it. So I, I did the first five volumes. Um, mm -hmm. Right now it's continuing uh, with a, a friend of mine named Faith Erin Hicks, who's also a huge Avatar head. Like, that's all we talk about when we hang out. And she's great. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a friend. I'm her friend. But I'm also a big fan of hers. She did uh, a, a book series called Nameless City. She's just mm -hmm. another book called Superhero Girl. She's great. She's great. Uh, but um, we did the first five volumes. I did the first five volumes with a Japanese art studio called Gurihiru. They're amazing. Yeah, They're yeah. The best in the business right now. It was super fun. It was, it was like several years. I think I maybe worked on it for like five years or something like that. And it, it, is that all canon? Like, is that all part it's of the It's all lore? canon, yeah. That is yeah. crazy. It's all canon. It is crazy. It's, like, yeah. That's, yeah, a, I'm a, little that's a big deal. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun to do. And, and I mean, the best part of that is I got to work pretty closely with uh, Mike DiMartino and Brian Canizzo, yeah. the two yeah, creators yeah. of the show. Right. And I think you, you guys were on a panel recently, right? You did a, like a, a panel. Um, yeah. Yeah. How, yeah how I did that? a panel. We did a panel with, I mean, Faith was on it. Um, and, yeah, yeah. And Mike was on it. It was, I mean, it's just, it's, it's fun to be connected with that world. That world is so, so rich, I think yeah. the, the show was, was so well developed the characters in the world were so well developed. I mean, that's why they're such a passionate fan base, right? So to be connected to it in some small way, to have gotten to play in one of the corners of the Avatar verse was, it was, it was really fun. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's amazing. So then how did you uh, end up writing for Shang-Chi? Like how did yeah. that? How that, um, that, that, was, that was also kind of a crazy thing. They, um, so so Shang-Chi was, starting to get some more heat uh, because of the movie after the movie was announced, yeah. you know? And uh, one of the editors at Dark Horse, we'd been talking for a while about other projects, but it, nothing ever worked out. And then, and then he called me up and he was like, you know, we're, we're gonna start up Shang-Chi again. You wanna do a pitch for it? So I sent him a pitch and they liked it. Oh. So we, we, started, we started going. So that was, that was like right around when pandemic started as well. Oh uh, man. It's gone through ups and downs. Like sure, I, sure. Turned in, I turned in a script and then they ended up pausing the whole book, you know, cause, and yeah, yeah. Uh, we're moving forward. So it feels good now, but sure, for sure. a little while it was, it was a little touch and go. What, um, what research did you do uh, in like, I guess, preparation for writing a pitch or for end up for when you ended up writing, you know, like a, a mini series for it? Did you have to, did you already feel like you knew enough about the character to, to just make a whole new story? Or was it like you had to kind of do a little more research to kind of, um, you know, continue uh, an existing uh, character and universe. Yeah, I mean, I did, I did, I did read up on them. Um, I was not a big Shang Chi fan before this. As a kid, I remember yep. seeing Shang Chi comics on the stand, and I never bought one. Uh, yep. I think I was. I just went through a period of time when I didn't. 
I didn't want to be Asian, right? So you don't want to be the Asian kid at the comic book store picking up the comic with an Asian totally. superhero in it. Totally. So I avoided him as much as possible. Uh, and it wasn't until my 20s that I, I read a couple of Shang-Chi comics. But to uh, prepare for this, I mean, the, the, I, I think my editor, my editor, his name is Darren Shan. He's a, he's a Chinese American as well. And I think we feel the same, you know, like neither of us, we're both comic book geeks, but neither of us have a real heart attachment to Shang-Chi for all those reasons, for, you know, being embarrassed and all, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and one of the reasons why we want to do it was because we want to um, flesh them out so that Asian Americans can have a heart attachment to him, you know? So I, I, read, I read a bunch of old Shang-Chi comics. He sent me a bunch of them when I started on the project. Uh, it, both the really old stuff, like from the 1970s. Yeah, yeah. Started in the 1970s. That was when America was going through this collective obsession with Bruce Lee. Yep. So, so then they invented this character um, who is sort of like Bruce Lee as Fu Manchu's son. So, I mean, that's one of the big goals, right? We have like an all, you know, Chinese diaspora creative team. So, um, you know, Darren, Darren, my editor, is, is a Chinese American in New York. I'm living in the Bay Area. Uh, one of our artists is DK Ruan, who is a Chinese Italian living in Italy. And uh, the other artist is Philip Tan, who is a Chinese Filipino living oh, in yes, the yes. Philippines. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then Jimmy Chung is, or did that cover of the first issue. So he also did the redesign of the, of the costume. And oh, he's cool. Chinese Australian, I believe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is like so, global, right? Yeah, yeah. It's global. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere where there's Chinese people. <laughs> But yeah, can you talk about sort of some of the, the, the challenges, I guess, with, with writing Shang-Chi? I mean, one of, the, one of the big challenges is that Marvel doesn't do these hard resets of their universe, right? Like DC's done it a couple times where they reset the universe and then the history changes. But Marvel, for the most part, they do soft reboots of the, of the universe. But everything that was, you know, back in the day is still in play, which means the problematic elements and everything are still in play. Mm. Um, so that was, that was the big challenge. The big challenge was, you know, we have to keep the peace that his dad is a supervillain, that his dad is bent on taking over the world, um, that he's from like this, uh, this, you know, he's, that, that he's from this, not, not China, but like this weird vision of China, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we had to keep all those pieces. So what, one of the big challenges was trying to spin those things in a way that would, make sense in a modern context yeah and that would also lend to character development i, I think a lot of shang chi's early appeal was sort of um his otherness you know like that was that was central to why people read sure. him. they read him as not a character that they wanted to inhabit themselves but a character to look at to, yeah to kind of observe and what we're trying to do is we're trying to make shang chi into a character that the reader inhabits Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's cool. I, I was very curious to see how it would be different, right? How you would write him differently. I'm very excited to see where, um, where you take the character because, you know, you could take him anywhere, which is great because he hasn't been taken there before. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's still, I mean, he's still a Kung Fu guy. He's still a Kung Fu oh, guy. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kung Fu. Yeah. Um, but, but I, I think central to our version of the story is his family. You know, we, we really wanted to, to dive into his family. So we're introducing uh, a bunch of siblings for mm -hmm. him. And then, um, and then we do talk a lot about his relationship with his dad. Got it. I'm really glad you brought up um, the siblings because, so you, you mentioned that you had the chance to create a new character. Uh, one of many, right? I'm sure you came up with a few. Um, but the one that you mentioned was... Uh, I believe his sister. Yeah, uh, yeah, can yeah. You there's, just, yeah. Can you talk about just kind of how uh, that that process was and how you fleshed out that character? Yeah. Um, so, so there are a couple of a couple of siblings that um, that we're introducing. Not a couple, a handful of siblings that we're introducing that we're going to dive deep into throughout the the five issues. Uh, the most prominent one is probably going to be the main antagonist, and her name is Sister Hammer. So she is. Uh, Shang Chi's younger sister, and um, and and a lot of the the tension between these two characters uh, is it stems from their relationships with their father. So so Shang Chi was always the chosen one, and then mm -hmm. Sister Hammer was definitely not. So it I, I think um, I mean as an Asian American I feel like that's 
such a part of our our culture you know yeah <laughs> like yep. parent and uh, expectations yep and 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 this sibling idea rivalry that your, or just, yeah your relationship with your parents really affects yeah. your relationship with your siblings absolutely and especially you know uh in, in asian culture the order in which you are born means something yeah yeah you know? that's true that's true i mean i think that's true of a lot of different cultures oh, absolutely yeah, yeah in yeah. asian First cultures born, yeah. There's a, there's a special little oomph to it, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Especially, and, and, um, the gender, you know? Yeah. And the gender, so, yeah, the gender makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. How, uh, how involved were you in the, the look of, uh, the character or in any of the characters, just because you, you yourself are, you're, you're a mm -hmm. cartoonist, you're an illustrator, you draw also. And, um, I'm just curious, how involved were you in the the visual uh, visuals of yeah, the character? Yeah, I mean, I mean, so each character started off with uh, a text. Each of the new characters starts off with a text description from me, mm. and then one of the artists, either DK or uh, or or Phil, will fill them out. I um, see. So uh, often they will deviate from what I describe, but they'll always make it better. Like a hundred percent of the time what they come up with on the page looks better than what I had imagined in my, uh, in my head. I, I think a lot of the character design is, is just about expressing their character externally. Right. So mm -hmm. both DK and, and, and Philip are, are master cartoonists. So it just comes out in their designs. Cool. Yeah. That, I, yeah. That's good to hear. That's kind of like a collaborative effort as opposed to yeah. just kind of like a, you know, one-sided like, okay, we're, this is a female Asian martial artist that will always just wear a red outfit and that's it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that's cool. Um, can I share a slideshow with you? Just sure. Kind of, uh, just to mix things up a little bit. All right, can you see this? I can, yeah. Great, so can you describe your art style? Oh, I don't know. I feel like my art style is fairly limited. When I was a kid, I really wanted to be a Disney animator. And I think a, we all a wanted to be a Disney animator. I, right? That was like the dream. That's job. the dream. You're either a doctor, an astronaut, a cowboy, or a Disney animator. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. So I think I think there's still a little bit of that in in my style, but but really, I don't know. I feel like I just draw, I draw one way, and it slowly mutates over time, and that, that's it. So uh, I, I I do feel lucky that I get to work with these other artists, right? That can draw on this a, a huge variety of different styles. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you? If if Marvel were to say, "Hey, would you like to create a cover for one of the Shang Chi variants?" <laughs> would you do it? I I would I would probably do it, but I would hesitate. I would hesitate. I did do some art for the big two recently. I I actually mm. did one page in uh, one of the Legion super Legion of Superheroes issues. I think it was like number nine. They had a whole bunch of different artists. They had one artist do each page. You know. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I did one of the pages and I was super intimidated, you know, cause I was like, I mean, all these other guys were in there, like Ryan. Sure. Stewart. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, so I that's spent a lot of time on that one page. I'm sure you were <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to need two months. Yeah. Nobody that's right. talk to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's incredible. That's amazing. I mean, that's, that's still like a huge accomplishment, right? Like that's, that's a big deal. Um, yeah. I was, I was happy to do it. I don't know if I'd do it again, but I was happy to do it. Cause I was so intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's cool. Here are some um, covers to some of the books you've written. And you know, I, I'm always interested in the process. How involved were you in the cover designs of your books? So um, I, I would say, okay, but each of these is a different case, right? Like for the most part, I would say um, I realized pretty early on, I'm not awesome at, at, at graphic design. I'm not mm -hmm. awesome at, uh, at uh, like, the covers, right? I, I, I generally try to just focus on the pages inside. Um, and, and for each of these, there was a designer that, that put it together. So for Dragon Hoops, especially, there's a guy named uh, Kirk Benshop who works at uh, First Second Books, and he's the one that, that put that together. He did a great job. Like if you hold a full physical book in your hand, it actually feels like a basketball. He got the I was texture say, right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, so for that one, I mean, even the logo, even like the logo of my head, I didn't do. That was actually my son. <laughs> I have a 16-year-old son, and I made him do it on Illustrator. Oh, I'm that's really amazing. Okay. Yeah, for, for Secret Coders, so I did have a hand in the design of the characters. When I first proposed Secret Coders, I proposed it as a book that I would both write and draw. Mm -hmm. um, so I had all the character designs done, including the turtle. 
uh, but in terms of the layout of the, of the book, of the, of the cover, um, that was done by designers and, and by Mike Holmes, who was the eventual artist of the book. Got it. And then for uh, American Born Chinese, that was a long time ago. It came out in 2006. And what I remember from that is I did draw a bunch of art that could possibly be used on, on the cover, including, you know, the final image that's kind of cut in half. Yeah. On uh, the left side of that cover. Does that, it's uh, a, is it a wraparound? Like, does that? Yeah, does it, it does wrap around. To the back? Okay. It does wrap around. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and, then the, uh, and then the background as well, yeah. I drew. But um, my memory is that uh, Lark Pien, who was the, who's the colorist of that book, she's the colorist of Dragon Hoops as well. And then a designer named Danica, Bench, uh, Danica uh, Navgorda kind of put that together. Got it, so. got it. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, always fascinated. Um, and also, the American Born Chinese, that's the one that uh, was like the first graphic novel to win a bunch of awards, right? In, in like categories that never had a graphic um, Yeah, yeah, I was, I was part of this wave that happened in the early 2000s, you know, where, where comics were finally getting some literary attention. So mm -hmm, I was, mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was really fun. It was really fun to be a part of that. Yeah. And it's a, that's the one that won an Eisner too, right? Like that's, that's kind of like the, the Oscars of like the comic book community. Um, yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, that was a crazy night. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, that yeah, that's awesome. Night. You've given a few TED Talks, is that right? Only one. I only really? did one. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah. What kind of preparation did you have to undergo for this? Were you nervous? Oh. It, I was really nervous. It was pretty intense. I didn't realize, like, if I had known how intense it was to give a TED Talk, and it wasn't even, it was like a TEDx talk, right? Which is a slightly less intense version of, of a TED Talk. Oh, is that true? If I had okay. known how, like, intense it was, I don't know if I would have said yes. So the organizers are great, but they also know that there's a standard that you have to hit with TED Talks. So, uh, you know, I'd been doing public speaking for a while at right. that point. So when they called me up, I was like, sure, I'll do it. And then they would call me up on uh on like on like uh skype to go over the talk over and over and over again over several months to, oh wow to kind of re refine it you know uh and i felt like i learned a lot but it was also a very time intensive process huh yeah because i i've seen only one video on youtube where you know a guy who's giving a ted talk goes over the process and i was like wow that's really intense and i was yeah. just wondering if that was true with this um with yeah, yours. absolutely. Like we did it. We did it. I mean, this was a topic that I, I talked about in other venues right. like a billion times. Right. Yeah. But for Ted, they like looked over the, the, the outline and then the actual words that I was going to say. And then I practiced oh. it over and over and over again. We like cut it down to just the essential pieces. Right. Um, I, I learned a lot, but it was also, it was also a really intense process. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, do you think that was probably the most because you know you give lectures all the time. You're you know inspirational speaker. You're a teacher, so you're talking in front of people all the time. But do you think this was the the most yes. nerve wracking? Yeah, yeah, that was probably the most nerve wracking one. <laughs> yeah, I oh you know so I also I also did a speech at my brother's wedding. That was also pretty nerve wracking. Sure. Okay. But besides, but yeah, those are the two I think. Interesting. That were the most nerve wracking. You did a signing at uh, what is this is the Austin Books and Comics uh, in Austin, mm -hmm. Texas. Can you talk about this image a little bit from your Instagram? Yeah, that was that was really fun. That was for um, the release of Superman Smashes the Clan. So Superman Smashes the Clan is is a is a recent graphic novel that I had come out. Okay. From DC Comics, and it started off as a three issue miniseries. So after the first issue came out, um, I just happened to have a weekend scheduled in Austin. I was going to visit an old college friend, mm -hmm. so I called up Austin Books and Comics, which is this great comic book store in that area. Yeah. I'd done a couple of events with them before. And I asked if I could do a signing there, and they were gracious, gracious enough to say yes. So, uh, so we did it. It's, uh, I mean, you know, I grew up going to comic book stores, right? Since I was in fifth grade, so they kind of feel like home to me. Totally, and yeah. Austin comics in uh, Austin books and comics is one of the best in the country. How often do you do signings at comic shops? Um, I, I mean, I do, I do a decent number. I think uh, I, so. My, my local comic shop, the one that I have a pull box at, I'll be doing a signing. At, um, at the end of this month when Shang-Chi comes out. It'll nice. be like a social distance signing, right? Of so course. I'm gonna go yeah, in on yeah. a Tuesday to sign all the books and then yeah. they'll be distributed in a, in a, in a safe, uh, you know, COVID safe way the next That's day. That's right, that's right. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot but, about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do, I would say I do, I mean, I do maybe a handful a year. 
Maybe nice. nice. Yeah. This is not even all of the variant covers for issue one. Like, it's funny because when I was doing some research, I was like, wow, they've already released all the covers for all the issues. And then I realized these are just for one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. How crazy is that to know that like, because usually they don't, I don't think they have this many variants for, for like a, re, for like a, re, a soft reboot. Right? No, like, no, no, no. This it's, is like ridiculous. Yeah. There's, this is yeah, even it's all pretty intense, like, dude. Yeah. Yeah. They're all like, amazing artists. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, well, like, like, like Art Adams, Art Adams did one. I, I couldn't believe oh, it. When I found that's out right. I did one, because he was like one of my favorites when I was yeah, a kid. That's right. Um, yeah. Because like, you know, there's like Ron Lim on here. You yeah, know, Ron Lim's on there. Uh, I like, loved Ron Lim when I was a kid. I mean, I still love Ron Lim now. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, and they just have like, you know, like modern uh, artists too. So that, yeah, it's really crazy. Yeah, I was Jen just Martel's like, there. Yep. Yep. It's, uh, it's that, amazing. I was actually going to use that as a, my virtual background if you were going to have oh, okay. one. Because um, <laughs> I was like, okay, I need something, something flashy. And those. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's crazy. Um, have you seen all, all the covers? I have not. Like, I didn't even know they were going to do this until it actually showed up on uh on the internet you know yeah. and then and then i talked to darren my my editor about it and and the i i think um i mean i i'm really thankful i think i think uh marvel is is really trying to trying to push it you know like they're they really want to throw a lot of support yeah behind the book and it's, it's even better right because they're it's based off of uh your story so that's even yeah, like that's right um do you look at these yeah. covers and do you see certain moments that they've captured from and I don't know if these artists have read anything. Probably, I'm. I don't know uh, too much about like how much information artists get to do a cover. Um, yeah, but... I'm not. I'm not sure either. Although, I mean, some of like the Ron Lim cover and the and the Art Adams cover, and and definitely the Jen, uh, the Jen Bartel cover. It seems like they were at, at the very least they were given some information about the about the story. Right. Those mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. those are some of his supporting cast that are showing up. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I've always been curious about that because I've also read, you know, where sometimes a, a cover artist will not be given anything more than like, we need a character doing something cool, you know, and that's it. So yeah, I was just very yeah. curious to see. Yeah, I mean, I have worked on books where the, like the cover is actually commissioned before I even submit an outline. Right, you know? right. Um, so what's the story behind this image? <laughs> and that tell, me, for, tell uh, me about the photo shoot process. I'm very, yeah, I that was, enough, like, I got to talk, I got to ask yeah, about this. Yeah, that was, that was for a, a newspaper article. I think it was in the uh, Chronicle, in the San, San Francisco Chronicle. And we met at Lu Elusive Comics in, in oh, uh, uh -huh. San Jose, which is my, that's, that's where I have my pull box. That's my nice, local nice. store. Um, and that was not my idea. That was not my idea. The, the photographer was like, all right, let's try this. You're going to lay he, in a pile of all the Yeah, books he made me lie out. down on a, on, a, on a table, and then he put all these. For, so I'm going to be really honest. When I saw this, I was like, wow, some super fan photoshopped your face on a pile of comics. And then, I real, <laughs> and then I, when I looked at it closer, I was like, this is a real photo. It's a real photo. Like, That's right. It's a there's real like photo. a book corner jamming you in the neck. So I was like, this is real. Yep. Um, yeah, that was how totally long real. It, how long did this take? Dude, I think we were in there for about an hour. And, and Elusive <laughs> Comics, I mean, they're super nice, right? So they totally put up with me lying on a table and stuff. That's so, uh, yeah. I mean, that was not something I think I would have chosen <laughs> to do on my own. <laughs> so you mentioned uh, that if you could write for any Marvel character, Nightcrawler was a character you would like to write for. Is that true? Yeah, I love that crawler. I love his design. I love his backstory, you know, I, and I think uh, when I was, you know, I, I collected X-Men comics when I was uh, a junior higher and a, and a high schooler. And I have to admit, I didn't understand all those storylines, but right, I yeah. always did love Nightcrawler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one, one of my favorite books when I was a kid was um, Excalibur, which was like a, yeah. like an X-Men spinoff. You're right, right. He was pretty prominent. The British version. <laughs> the British, yeah. The, the British X-Men. And he was pretty prominent in that book. Uh, you mentioned that Arthur Adams is kind of like one of your uh, early childhood inspirations and heroes in comics. Um, so here's a photo of me meeting him at Stockton Con. I believe it was last year. If you could meet him, <laughs> what, and, and if you could have him sign one thing, what would it be? I've, I've met him a couple times. I met, oh, him, okay. uh, I, I met him when I was pretty young, like in my early 20s. 
uh, just at a comic book convention. Okay. Like, no, he, he was at an artist alley table. Nobody was talking to him. So I went up and I, and I had a small, you know, I had a short chat with him about his career. Oh, about, that's awesome. Uh, like, I, this is what I remember us talking about. I remember us talking about how he never had any formal training. And then I also remember him, uh, us talking about how he had to do a lot of video game covers at the time to make ends meet. Huh. Uh, yeah, I mean the the comic book industry at the time was not doing very well. This was like right. late ni- late nineties, baby. Yeah, so it was like uh, and then uh, and then more recently, I I, I met him at um, at a sh- at a shop uh, in Concord called uh, Flying Colors. Um, oh, so yeah. the owner of yeah. Bill Field is is the creator of um, Free Comic Book Day. Um, so it's a pretty true? famous shop. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. Free Comic Book Day began in Concord, California, so it's that is uh, crazy. All right, isn't it, isn't it crazy? Yeah, I yeah, did not so know why. We did an event there, and then and then he was there. Like, um, yeah, he was there, and I just, I mean, we barely talked. I was just, yeah, yeah, nervous. If I could get him to sign one thing, I've never gotten him to sign anything, even though I've met uh-huh. him a few times. Um, it would probably be Gumby's Winter Special. That it was, it's a, I'm sure you've never read it. A, co- a comic book company that's no longer around called Comico. I read that when I was a kid and it kind of blew my mind. Um, so it was, he had, there were two Gumby specials. There was a Gumby's Summer Fun Special and a Gumby's Winter Fun Special. I never got the Summer Fun Special, but the Winter Fun Special was, was awesome. It was about Gumby and Santa Claus um, going to hell. It was, it was oh, amazing. I'm going to yeah. look that up. Yeah. Yeah, you should look it up. It was drawn by Art Adams. Amazing. Art amazing. Okay. Oh, it wasn't yeah. just like cover. He actually did the. No, 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 no. He did the whole thing. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. That okay. was a gorgeous looking book. Yeah. Interesting. I will. I'm gonna make a note of that, and I'm gonna add that to my list. Okay. So you're a basketball fan. <laughs> if you could take Jeremy Lin out for lunch anywhere in the Bay Area, where would you take him? Oh, I'd probably take him out to, for uh, Vietnamese sandwiches somewhere. You know? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he's yeah. from Palo Alto. Palo Alto has some great Chinese yes. food, right? Yes. But mm-hmm. I'm from San Jose. And I think the one thing, one of the things that San Jose is better than Palo Alto at is. is oh, yeah. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Yeah. Cool. All right. What we got here. Okay. So, uh, so this is uh, Simu <laughs> Liu, the actor who's playing uh, Shang-Chi in the uh-huh. live action movie. Um, if you could give him a piece of um, Shang Chi advice or uh, some background on the character. What would it be? <laughs> I so so Simu Liu and I we are uh, we're Twitter friends. Like we've um, no. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. We're Twitter friends. So we like like uh, when he was on Kim's. Well, I guess he's still on Kim, Kim's Convenience, right? So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, so when I started watching Kim's Convenience, he made this uh, like a joke about uh, an Asian Superman. And I was doing a, a book called New Superman for DC Comics at the time, uh-huh. which is about a Chinese Superman. So I sent him a bunch of comics and then we had this, this short exchange. Um, I, I think, uh, I don't know, man. I, th- I feel like he's, he's ki- kind of got it already. He's like charismatic, he's funny. You know, he's, he's not like this flat character. He's, he's, he's three dimensional. He's a character that, like the, at least the character that he plays on, on uh, Kim's Convenience is a character that you could inhabit, not that mm-hmm. not one that you could just you just look at, right? Right. Like right. you understand his motivations, you understand his his flaws. So I, I feel like he's got it. And and he can also do like a roundhouse kick. Uh we have a mutual friend. Um mm-hmm. and he actually had a question for you. Um he said, Do you remember the monkey king podium that they took from you over a weekend? And then they painted over it and gave it back to you. I totally you know? remember that. I totally remember that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was actually, it was in my classroom for a very long time. Uh, and uh, I loved it. And then one summer I came back and it was, it was gone. It was disappeared. So I still have that photo of, of, uh, oh, okay. Brandon, you know, our mutual friend. And, yeah. 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 You know, and it was like, Kevin, I don't remember. There were like three kids, I think that did it. I still have that photo somewhere uh, in a box. Uh, That's but that was awesome. Yeah, I also, you know, the, the other thing that he made for me that I thought was really awesome was he did like a action figure. Of what? Uh, of, uh, oh, it was oh. of me, it was of me. Like it was like this action figure back and then it was like a, a paper cutout in the middle, but it, he had like the, the plastic, 
like the little plastic, uh, I don't even know what they call it, but it looked like an action figure, like from far away at least, it looked like an action figure that you would buy at the store. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Brandon's a pretty creative dude. He He's is, he is. Dude. I'll have yeah. to uh, ask him about that. He said he was yeah. trying to look for a photo and I was like, well, send it to me soon because I'm talking to Gene. <laughs> um, all right, awesome. I'm sure he'll be excited to hear that. Uh, but yeah, so shout out to, to Brandon. Um, when can we expect Shang-Chi number one in uh, comic book shops? So it'll be out uh, September 30th. And so, uh, is that, um, it, you said it was a five issue run? It's a five issue run. Okay, yeah. cool, awesome. Um, Gene, that's all I have. Uh, I just wanna say, you know, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, it's been super exciting and it's an honor um, to, to talk to you and, uh, you know, let you know that I appreciate you taking the time to, to be here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great yeah. to talk to you too. Cool. And then, uh, uh, yeah, can we catch up once uh, all the five issues are out and we'll do a little sure. recap? That'd be great. Because I know you've yeah. been like, I don't want to ask you anything that, you know, it's spoilery <laughs> or whatever. So I've been trying to be very respectful about um, not having you spoil anything. So uh, I'd love to talk to you when you can just uh, let it all out. Um, sure. I'd love cool. to. All right. That'd well, uh, thank you so much. And I will talk to you again soon. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye, Gene. All right. Bye-bye.